Welcome, sweet friends, to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy. My husband is Paul. We're so happy you are with us. Our video today is just packed full of hints and tips on how to live a full, abundant life while spending less money. I'm going to show you what I'm doing when I get up at 5.30 a.m. and what I created in the kitchen. We're going to show a small loss leader food haul. We're going to show you what to do with an empty ketchup bottle. That's a fun one. And then we're going to talk about how you can actually get free money. And no, we're not kidding. So sit back, relax, and let's get right to this video. To start with, we're going to go back in time to about 5.30 this morning. I came down and figured I'd grab the camera and just share a little bit of what my morning looked like. So here we go. Turn the cameras around. Let's get back to 5.30 a.m. this morning. The first thing I did was to start Paul's coffee and get his cup out for him. What about these sweet nodding birds? I just took some time and listened to the birds waking up. It was absolutely magical. Pear tree is in full bloom. We are hoping for a wonderful crop this year. It's a little bit later now. Boy, did I get up early today. <laughs> We're going to make some yummy banana muffins. I'll link the original recipe down below, but as usual, this one's going to have a little bit of Emmy's tweaking to it. We're going to need two ripe bananas. The recipe did call for two eggs, but being that we are paying $4 a dozen for eggs right now. We're going to use one egg and a quarter cup sour cream in place of the extra egg. And I am sure it's going to be just great. Half a cup of a mild oil. This is vegetable oil. You can use applesauce by all means. A third cup sugar. Look what we have here. Oh goodness, a chocolate egg, hollow. I'm gonna show you some of the bowls this morning. This is my Pyrex friendship pattern. So beautiful, my brother and sister-in-law gave me this one. And in this bowl, we have got one and two thirds cup flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. That's all you need. This is going to be so easy. And this is another beautiful Pyrex, again, from my brother and my sister-in-law. This is the yellow daisy pattern. Is this gorgeous? Whisk together the sugar, oil, and eggs first. So we've got our sugar. We've got our oil. Now in place of one of the eggs, I'm adding a quarter cup of the sour cream. Remember the spatula is your best friend, especially if it is a Mickey spatula. And the one egg. We're just gonna whisk this together. And now I just added my two bananas and we're gonna give them a mix. Always use a plastic coated whisk if you're using any kind of bowl that you don't want scratched. Because the bananas were so soft, they whisked up beautifully. No need to even take out the electric mixer. I'm gonna set this aside for just a minute. We have our dry ingredients. And oh my goodness, what do we have here? A little chocolate egg. If you all saw my video where I made the chocolate mousse in the hollow chocolate egg, these are the eggs. I have a whole bag. So what do we do with them now? Easter's over. We just don't want to eat chocolate eggs. I'm going to take the little zester that Paul bought me and I'm going to zest this egg. Just be careful as always. Watch your fingers when you're doing this. Right into our dry ingredients. Now we're just going to add our dry ingredients to our wet. Remember that leftover chocolate from Easter, repurpose it into baked goods. Make sure you use it up. So many times 
We forget that just plain chocolate can be used in baking. Smash it up and use it in chocolate chip pancakes, muffins, breads, whatever. And you don't want to over mix this because then your muffins will be tough. So we just want to incorporate the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients. Okay, because Emmy and Paul keep it real, we just took the other half of the egg and we chopped it up and now we're adding it into the banana muffins, okay? I took a butter wrapper out of the refrigerator and now we're just gonna grease 12 regular size muffin tins. I just preheated the oven to 375 degrees and I'm using my handy dandy little scoop and we're gonna put a scoop in each one so it fills about three quarters of the way up. I'm gonna put them in a preheated 375 degree oven for about 17 to 21 minutes until a toothpick inserted in the middle comes out clean. What a great way to start the morning. These cooked for exactly 17 minutes at 375. They are beautiful. Look at how much they rose. Oh my goodness, these little delights. Now what I'm going to do is let them cool for just a few minutes and then I'm going to transfer them to a wire rack to cool completely. I've never made this recipe. Look at these. They're absolutely gorgeous. Let's hope they taste as good as they look. The muffins are done, they're cooling, and I am going to make myself a pot of gingerbread festival tea. One of my best friends gave me this container for my birthday. It's Harney and Sons, I believe. It is so decadent. She knows how much I love gingerbread. This is a frugal mid-morning break. I'm gonna just open this muffin to show you. It's beautiful, beautiful. I have a little cream cheese on my knife. Let's pour a little tea. This was my grandmother's cup. My goodness, isn't that beautiful? It's bone china. I'm gonna pour my tea. And now I'm gonna take about a 15 minute break because we all need that every now and again. Those muffins were absolutely perfect. The quarter cup of sour cream in replacement for the one egg worked out perfectly. Love that we grated the chocolate in. It gave it just that hint of cocoa. It was just such an easy recipe and I figured I was up anyway. Let's create something yummy for breakfast. Our weekend was so busy when I tell you. It was my niece Natanya's birthday this weekend. You know her, she has been in our videos many, many times. Well, we spent the whole day together with her and her family. She and I got our nails done together. And then we went back to her home and she made us chicken souvlaki, which was so much fun. She's a great cook. And then the following day, we had company over for dinner. Wonderful. If you can see these beautiful flowers behind me, they were a gift from them. We also ran to Acme real quick over the weekend because they had some amazing loss leaders. I'm going to turn the camera around. We're going to show you what we got. Acme this week has some amazing loss leaders. I want to encourage you to please check your digital coupons. They're 80% ground beef, $3.49 a pound. This is the digital offer we have. We can get the 80% ground beef at $2.49 a pound, and it is good for the entire month of April. That is a dollar less a pound than what they're advertising. These digital coupons are sometimes tailored to the individuals, so check them before you head out to the store. I love also when you get fresh fruit and vegetables for lost leaders. Mangoes, avocados, 79 cents a piece, limit four offers, great deal. 
Signature Select Ketchup or Yellow Mustard, two a piece, 49 cents. And then just for fun, 99 cents for a 12 ounce package of iced oatmeal cookies. Because these kind of packaged cookies have a longer shelf life, we're gonna use those for the car ride down to the little house in Carolina. So we ran into Acme. There was no minimum purchase to get these specials. And oh my goodness, we got five pounds of the ground beef. And what we do is we put it in eight ounce packages. We press them flat and we use our food saver. We date them five pounds of ground beef at $2.49 a pound. Three avocados, 79 cents. Look at the size of these mangoes. Look at this in my hand, 79 cents a piece. We got three of them. Absolutely beautiful. The 99 cents oatmeal cookies, so fun. And then we did get two of the ketchups. They're 12 ounces each at 49 cents, and the mustard is eight ounces at 49 cents. When you look at the ketchup and the mustard, don't only think of them as a condiment like ketchup and mustard. Think of barbecue sauces, think of salad dressings, Think of marinades you can make. Look at them and think, how can I use these other than the way they were intended for and how we can save money by being creative? Right here, we have the makings for a delicious barbecue sauce. So that was just a great little haul. I encourage you to keep looking for those lost leaders, stocking up on them when you can, especially if you find like meat and fruit and veggies, such great deals. Okay, now let's get into a little money talk. And I'm going to give this disclaimer. Paul and I are not financial experts. We are not financial consultants. In no way, shape, or form are we telling you what to do with your money ever. And I think you all know that. But we're going to tell you what we have been doing to earn some extra free cash. Right now, interest rates in banks are the highest they have been in many, many, many years. There are accounts called Certificates of Deposit, CDs. And right now, those CD rates are from 4.75 all the way up to 5%. Now, let me explain how a CD works if you're not familiar with it. Almost all banks offer them. And of course, you would call ahead to find out what the interest rate is for that CD. And then you would decide how much would you be able to put into an account that you would not be able to touch for a certain amount of time. Let me be clear with that. Let's hypothetically say you have $2,000 sitting in an account that you're not even using, you're not thinking about, and it's earning 1%. This is not your emergency fund money now because emergency fund money, you need to be able to get and pull out at any time. This is money that you're saving, whatever it may be. And hypothetically, we're going to say it's $2,000. You call up the bank and you say, what's your CD rates right now? Your certificate of deposit rates. And they say right now, 4.75 if you keep it in the bank for three months. Now, this is something very important with CDs. If you agree to take your money and put it in that bank to earn 4.75% on that CD rate, you can not touch it for those three months. That's why I am saying this is not money that you need to be able to get to. It, it won't work for that because you'll be penalized if you pull it out ahead of the three months. So now let's think about this. You have $2,000 that's sitting in a savings account earning 1%. You take it out, you put it in this certificate of deposit for three months and they have them up to three months, six months, a year, 18 months, all different rates. So let's say we pick the three month rate at 4.75%. You take that $2,000, put it 
put it away for three months. Now you cannot touch it for those three months. When those three months are up and now you can take your money out, you can do what you want with it. What Paul and I do is call several different banks in our area and see which offers the best interest rates. Each bank will have their own set of rates, so shop around. Paul and I love CDs. We do. We don't dabble in the stock market. We don't do anything like that. But CD rates right now are so high and so great. This is a good source of income for us because we have money, as I have always told you, we save. That's who we are. So our savings, and again, not money that you are going to need to touch because you're basically telling the bank for three months, you can keep my money. And please do not go on a rant in the comments below about how you hate banks. If you hate banks, skip over this section. So it's basically like you're loaning your money to the bank and they're paying you to borrow it. That's basically it in a nutshell. And for Paul and I, this is a very lucrative way for us to make some cash. Now, of course, at the end of the year, it comes in as income, interest, so you do have to claim it on your taxes. Of course, that goes without saying. But for us, this really works. So again, we are not financial advisors, but if this is something you think you would be interested in, give the bank a call, ask them, get all the information, because honestly, it is a very, very easy way to earn some free cash. If you have any questions, just ask them down below. You know us. We are always happy to answer anything that you have questions about. Okay, so how do we get the money to put in our CDs? Well, we are pretty frugal. And this is one item that I have never really thought about until recently. This is an empty ketchup bottle right? Just an empty ketchup bottle with a squirt top. And I was going to recycle it. I looked at this and I was like, Paul, there has got to be stuff we can do with this. So he and I sat down with it and we were thinking, okay, homemade salad dressing could be stored in the refrigerator. Just squeeze it when you want it. Homemade barbecue sauce. If you buy in bulk, this would be a great way to take just a little bit of mayonnaise or ketchup or mustard, whatever you're using, and put it in a container like this. This would also be great for frozen items. Oh my gosh, you could put like frozen peas in here even. You could do whatever. Paul came up with what I thought was one of the best ideas for this container. So I'm gonna turn the camera around. We're gonna show you what we're gonna use this empty ketchup container for. Anyone who knows us knows that we are brand loyal to ivory soap and all detergent. And I use all detergent as a state treater. But how I do it is usually take the lid and pour some in and then I spot it on and it can be a little messy and I waste a lot of it. So my genius husband said what we need to do is turn this into a little spot treater. All you have to do is take the cap off, turn it upside down, open the lid, and you'll see there's a little rubber membrane right here for the ketchup to come out. Just remove that. That's all I did with this little nail. I pulled out the membrane, and now you have just a basic hole. So this has got some chocolate pudding on it, and I definitely want to pre-treat this before I put it in the wash. Please make sure you always label your containers. Keep them out of reach of children when you use a food container for something other than food. Now we're going to give this a try. I'm going to hold that up. Beautiful. Just what I need is coming out. What a difference. I'm telling you, when I used the cap, it was all over and I wasted so much. Just gonna rub it in and we're gonna wash this. Now I have my own little spot treater. It's going right up into the laundry room. We hope you enjoyed this video. There was a lot of bits and pieces, 
but we keep it real. We want to share our lives, how we live a frugal life, what we do to be frugal, and we hope it is an encouragement to you. Today's question of the day, what has been an aha frugal moment for you lately? Have you done something different that you've never done before on your frugal journey? Have you repurposed something into something else? Have you found a great deal on a loss leader or a great deal at the thrift store, something you've been looking for? Have you invented a new recipe or substituted one ingredient out for another to make it more economical. Share your wonderful ideas down below, please. It will not only encourage us, but it'll encourage those who read your comments, which are so many of you. And we thank you for the wonderful community you all have created here for us. If you enjoyed this video, we ask that you give it a big thumbs up, please. Subscribe if you haven't. Come on in and be part of our frugal family. Please double check your subscription to make sure you are subscribed and click that little notification bell. You will get an alert every time we put out a new video. We are so close to 50,000 subscribers and we thank you all so much. Let's hit that 50,000 mark together. We ask you to be well, we ask you to be safe, and above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, may God greatly bless you.